Hits 96, Chattanooga's number one hit music station. Gino D here with you, and today we have a very special guest joining us. In fact, we just had a fantastic radio interview that you'll be able to hear on the air. Um, it's also going to be on our website, hits96.com. I am here with Hunter Cloudis, Chattanooga's own, and you may know you as J.J. Parker from All American. How are you yes, doing? Yes, so good, so good. So happy to be here. Um, I love this space. It's so nice. Um, and so uh, cool, uh, I, I, I might add, uh, because when I step off the plane, it truly, the humidity just latched onto me. It was 100 degrees, um, and I knew it was home, and I was happy. I was sure. happy to be home, but whew. It's warm. We're <laughs> in California. Yeah. We have some of the weather over there. It's just, yeah. It gets warm. Don't, let's not get it wrong. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a different type of heat. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. no denying that. Yeah. No denying. <laughs> um, All American is your show on the CW. You guys are going into season five come fall. Um, people can watch seasons one through four right now on Netflix. For those that, and how dare they, but for those <laughs> who may have not seen All American, real quick, just give us a quick synopsis of what the show's about and why people should tune in. Yeah, um, uh, it's it's essentially a, a tale of two cities. Um, it, it's really cool as far as uh, the stories that are told. I, I think um, in super simplified form, you have um, perhaps the the wealthier um, uh, people and and let's say the less fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, and it's seeing uh, how more alike we are than different, uh, which is why I think it's so relatable in a time where. A lot of things are divisive uh, that we go through in life. Uh, I think it's cool because it, 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 again, brings you ultimately together and you realize how similar we are opposed to how different we are. Absolutely. And your character, people will notice in the first two seasons or so, kind of a recurring character. You're, you're definitely part of the cast, but you're buzzing around. But come season three, season four, you really get your uh, your level upgraded. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's such an honor uh, to have the opportunity. And it's cool because when I signed on, I, I was just a recurring guest star. Mm -hmm. And nothing is ever promised uh, past that. You know, I think um, I, my first deal was like eight episodes. You never know if you'll be on the show again. Yeah. Uh, so to be on it more, um, and then a two, and then a three, and then to go to SR season regular in the fourth, it, it's um, a testament to uh, your work being appreciated, yep. which is, is, is a great feeling, but also knowing that uh, your work is uh, truthful enough for fans to, to connect, because ultimately fans kind of dictate uh, your, your job. <laughs> And, and if people don't like you, you're not going to be on the show. Um, but if people like you, then... They uh, want you on the camera. <laughs> they let you on the, in front of the camera. It's great. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm just super grateful uh, that, that what I put out there and the chances that I, that I took and the decisions that I make, uh, made with the work was received uh, and appreciated the way it was. And the Chattanooga is definitely proud of you. We should mention that you're going to be throwing the first pitch out at the Lookouts game this coming Saturday, which is pretty cool, too. I'm so excited. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to be a bat boy for the Chattanooga Lookouts back when they were affiliated with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a while since I've been back, but I still have. I know Larry Ward um, is over there uh, and calls the games. He's actually who I interviewed with goodness uh years many ago. years ago yeah. uh so i'm looking forward to shaking his hand again and just telling him thank you for everything excellent that's awesome and we talk about all this at length too um and we're going to post up the audio if you've missed it on the radio it's going to be on our website uh, hits96.com we talked about that but right now we're going to focus on we'll play a little bit of a game okay we call this the satchel of questions <laughs> okay. okay these are going to be completely <laughs> random questions kind of stuff that we haven't touched in the radio interview okay. uh because we think that's kind of more of the business talk talking yeah. about our, our lives and such yeah. Uh, so these are just me random questions. We'll do a handful of them. Let's and, do it. And let's see what we got, okay? Let's do it. We're going to have this you choose one at a time here. Satchel so of questions. Satchel of questions. This is question it. one. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. These might be all tied up. Try to get your Okay, there question you go. one. Do you have a wish list of actors or actresses that you would love to work with? Oh, that's a great question. No, I don't. No wish list. Next question. No <laughs> wish list. Come on now. Uh, I mean, I, I think there's just some legends, some greats that that kind of paved the way um, before me. Mm -hmm. um, you have like Matt Damon, yeah. uh, Brad Pitt. DiCaprio. Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, Leo, how could he not make that list? I think now um, you have people like Austin Butler, who just did yep. the uh, Elvis movie. Uh, I haven't worked with him yet. Miles Teller, who just did Top Gun. Uh, I've loved his work for a while. I haven't uh, worked with him yet. So you have some, you're starting to see the, the, the A-listers 
uh, the new generation is coming up. Yeah, the new yeah, 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 for yeah. Sure coming up. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward to working uh, alongside some of these people who uh, we're going to be going out for the same roles and yeah. we're going to be competing for the same things. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think there's space for everyone. Um, but yeah, I'd say that's my, my short list of, okay. of, of actors that it'd be fun to do some, do some work with. That's fair. That's how the satchel works. Here we <laughs> <Yeah>. go. <laughs> Satchel of questions. questions, man. What three items would you take with you on a deserted island? Go. You never know what the <laughs> questions are. I be. mean, they are just <laughs> random. Put you on the spot. Um, so you know, I really try and stay simple with with answers like this because you can get some people, and it's like, no, there's no cell service out there, so <laughs> don't take your phone. Uh, so I try not to ask questions upon the questions. Um, so what three items would I take on a deserted island? Um, I think I would take a journal, um, okay. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a pen in there. I'm yeah, not going to count it as my third. Um, just because I would love to, uh, to document it and write it. I don't know if it would survive. Um, I don't know if I would survive, <laughs> uh, but uh, I would love to, to uh, document it. I would take a camera, but it would run out of juice. So, uh, so I'm going to take a journal uh, just so I could document how I'm feeling uh, and hopefully it would get discovered someday. Um, uh, I'm not going to say something like flint or a lighter. <laughs> We're going to assume that I was able to somehow, able to that stuff. <laughs> right. somehow yeah. sustain. Uh, so I take a journal. Get the basics covered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I take a journal. Um, super uh, uh, left field, but maybe a surfboard. Uh, just to Why keep not? me busy, I, I used to surf out in LA, and I think that would be fun. So I'd have something for my mind uh, and spirit. I'd have something uh, for the physical to have fun with. Um, third thing that I would take with me on a deserted island. Uh, this isn't realistic, but hopefully I'm not on a deserted right, island. Right, the ever. situation is um, never realistic. I, I would take an unlimited supply of chocolate chip cookie dough. Uh, it's the go-to, and if uh, and I like it raw, and I would eat raw cookie dough back when my mom would tell me that it would give me salmonella if I did. Perfect. But I didn't care. Now, fun fact, on the wrapper, it actually says safe to eat raw. So I don't know if they've changed their ingredients or if no they companies. just knew the kids were going to do it anyway. <laughs> but I, that's what I would do. I would take a journal, a surfboard, and cookie dough. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Let's do a couple more here with the special question. Let's do it. I love the name. It's great. Okay. What's the most memorable party you've ever been to? Oh, this there is crazy. Go. So on the show, I play the party animal, yeah. the party guy. JJ Park. Um, fun fact, I've actually never smoked or drank anything in my entire life. Um, nothing against it. I no. just have never partaken. Um, so... Most memorable party is really a stretch. Um, we well, so, remember them all. A lot of people <laughs> that are doing those things there don't remember go. the party. There you go. Um, <laughs> I think one of the most memorable parties I've ever been to, uh, This is these are great questions. Um, my sister had a big luau party at the Ringgold, uh, Ringgold Georgia pool, and they went all out. I mean, a, around the entire pool was floats and uh, the, the boas that you were. I mean, it sure. was to the nines. <laughs> and my sister's a, a couple years older than me, so obviously she had a lot of friends that were a few years older than me, a.k.a. girls, a.k.a. babes back in the day. <laughs> Mind you, I should preface, I was like six or seven or eight years old. I was pretty young, but I was just like, this is heaven on earth. It's a pool party, there's cake everywhere, and my older sister's hot friends are everywhere. So, yeah, that's the that's, best party I've ever been sounds to. Sounds memorable. Goodness that's, gracious. That's yeah. memorable. Even, even now. <laughs> yeah. Even now. We'll go for two more here. Awesome, let's do it. We appreciate you taking some time oh, hanging course, out with us man. today. Oh, this, is, this one's oh, cut a little oh, thick. It's, it's a meaty one. Tell the story about your first encounter with a famous person. There we go. Oh, my have, goodness. This happened in L.A. once in a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking first encounter. Did I ever meet anyone? Oh, another great one. I'm telling you, my childhood, it was so good. Uh, and it's here in Chattanooga. Um, the, my first encounter uh, with a famous person uh, was, again, I think, at a birthday party. And I met Barney. And <laughs> I was on cloud nine. And I'm pretty sure all the kids were scared because this giant Barney was coming out. And I was loving it. 
Um, and I think on home movie somewhere he like fell and his head came off and all the oh kids were. Gosh. It was one of those like uh, America's Funniest Videos type thing. But yeah, Barney was really the first like iconic person that I'd seen on TV, and then I was meeting them in real life. So I don't think I'm gonna top that. With <laughs> a mere human. So not Barney. what I expected, but yeah, that works. <laughs> I even don't know what's gonna happen with the sexual <laughs> questions. <laughs> That's a bit sad. Let's do one more just for good measure. Okay. This has been so much fun. We could do these all day. Yeah. Okay. Final question. What's something about you that most people don't know, but you'd like them to know? It's a good one. That is a good one. And we get to reel it back into something yeah. deep. Get a little real. <laughs> um, uh, I think people are learning it. Uh, but I think that... Anytime you are put on uh, a pedestal of fame, uh, perhaps people have a, a certain type uh, image of you, um, and people only know what they see. So if people only see me on All American, and I've only seen, let's say, the first few seasons of that party guy, that that would be what they would think. Sure. Um, and, and even when I get on social, people usually ask, Tell me about the parties. Um, <laughs> but I think something that people uh, perhaps don't know about me, but they're learning, is that, man, I really care about people. And I really I really love others, and I really want to help them in any way that I can. And I always say, like, I have these four pillars of, uh, of strength, if you will, that I try and live by. Uh, it's hard work, uh, dedication, um, it's loving others, and it's loving yourself. Um, and I think that one at the end uh, is really, really important because we're always taught, you know, to love others. But I think it's so important that we take uh, time in life to, to, to make sure that we love ourselves and make sure that we're proud of ourselves and make sure that, we're, um, that we think uh, we're funny and that we think we're cool. Yeah. Because if we don't think that, how can we expect others to? So, um, yeah, I think uh, perhaps something that I, I hope people would, would know about me ultimately um, is uh, that uh, I'm, I'm here for you and I love you and I'm, I think it's so cool that we cross paths um, in this crazy life in this moment in time and you're, you're seeing this video and you're hearing my voice I just think that that's so cool and um, again uh, just coming together um, and, and finding comfort in that because life can, can be very overwhelming at times but uh, knowing that you're not alone I would want people to know that I care about them Excellent. Well said. Absolutely. Hunter Cloudus, everybody, from right here in Chattanooga. Again, you can catch him on Netflix, seasons one through four of All American, and season five hitting this fall on the CW. Hunter, thank you so much. That was Gino, so much fun. Pleasure, brother. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. It's Hits 96. Hits 96.